All right, in this video, this is a follow-up to the animating docs video that I posted recently. And in this video, I had two docs that I would have uh, scaling in vertically. And, you know, you can cycle between the two docs. And then I also showed you some other ways you can slide the docs in and out and so forth. Uh, however, after posting the subscriber, what they were originally looking for was a way to have more than two docs and animate them very very similar. Um, so here's what I've done. There's four docs. All you see right now is one doc and I just put these two buttons here and let me show you what I've done. I have four docs but all you see is one and here's the second one, here's the third one, and here's the fourth one. So essentially if you have a lot of items that you want to put down here and touch, you know, the way I have it set up now, one, two, three, four, five, and since I have four of these, this right here will go back to the beginning. Again, that's doc one, doc two, Doc 3, Doc 4. And you can also go backwards this way and notice the animations still work nicely. Now, let me go ahead and tell you, the way I have this set up, if you're going to use this technique, make sure you have an even number of docs. That way when you scale these in vertically um, and you adjust the module top and module bottom, that therefore no matter where you are, if one's going down, the next one will go up. You see what I'm saying? And then that this one's gonna go down, the next one will go up, uh, this one will go down, this one will go up, or however you see that. But you know, if you have an odd number, it's not gonna work out. So use an even number of docs for this particular technique. And again, we can go backwards and the same thing is still gonna happen here. So essentially we can have 20 different icons, 20 different things to touch down here, toggle, whatever you wanna put in this doc for your custom live wallpaper. So let's go ahead and have a look at KOWP. And as you can see, I do have four overlap groups. I call them Doc1, Doc2, Doc3, Doc4. And I have two icon fonts. That's just these two guys here to touch. All right. And here's what I've done to create this. Uh, in globals, all I have is one global variable. It is a list global variable. I have started using that more and more recently. And this works just fine. This can be done with the text global, but uh, I thought I'd never say this, but the the... Uh, text and now the list, the list global variable is becoming one of my favorites as well. So inside of this uh, list global, name it whatever you want and give it the values one, two, three, four. Basically, that's the number of docs I have uh, doc one, doc two, doc three, doc four. And that's all you have to do there. I've talked about creating lists. Remember, when you create it, you have to put a comma between each one and give it a name. All right. So going back to items, we got doc1, doc2, doc3, doc4. And basically for doc1, I've created my stuff. I have everything inside of it, but we have to go and animate it. Now all these docs have to be inside of your root. That way you can animate each one of them. So go to animation for doc1, formula, and here's the formula I have. If that global variable that I created, if the list global variable doc is not equal to one, I want to move this animation forward. If it's not, I want to move it backwards. And therefore, uh, I have it scaling out vertically. You can have this thing scroll, but you have to move your docs around. But I have it scaling out vertically. And notice I have it set to module top. It's important to remember that. Scale out vertical, module top. Because when I go and do doc two, let's go look at that now. For Doc2, maybe I should make this full screen. Sorry about that. When I go and do Doc2 animation, this is for Doc2. The formula is if the list global variable doc is not equal to 2, you want to move it forward. If not, you want to move it back. So um, what we're looking at here, I still have it scale out vertical, but now I have module bottom. And basically, I'm doing the same exact thing for module 3, or excuse me, Doc3 and Doc4. I'm alternating the anchor. So if I go back, and I go to doc3, go to its animation, scale out vertical, the formula if the list global variable doc is not equal to three, move it forward if it's not, or if, the, uh, if it is, move it back. So therefore, uh, look, module top. So remember, doc1 was anchored module top, doc2 anchored module bottom, doc3 anchored module top, doc4 will be anchored at the module uh, bottom, as you can see right here. See that? You can adjust your speeds, you can adjust your ease if you'd like. I'm just I'm showing you how I can get this done. Now, 
how do I have the touches set up on these two arrows? And you can put these wherever you want. This is the right arrow. So basically I want to move forward in my list global and we can do that. If we go to touch, I already have it set up. So I'm toggling that uh, list global variable and under entry, I, I'm not picking any of these. Basically I'm picking next value. So this is where order is important. Uh, next value, if it's at one, it's gonna go to two. If it's at two, it's gonna go to three. If it's at three, it's gonna go to four. And if it's at four, it's gonna go back to one. That's what next value will do. And since I have these in order, make sure you put them in order when you create your global variable. It's gonna do this nicely. The way we have it anchored at the module top and module bottom, it's always going to go and look smooth, so to speak. Um, you're not gonna have any going in the same direction. I uh, hope that makes sense. Again, use an even number of docs here. So uh, what else do I have to cover? Um, the touch over here for this guy, basically it's going to get, be set to previous value, this button here. So I go to touch, I'm toggling that same global switch and notice I have previous value. Now, this is what I like about list compared to text. I have some videos up here very similar um, using this kind of technique to where I used to say like a text global variable, I would say if the text global variable is less than one, um, you want to subtract one from it, otherwise you want to reset it to a certain value. But the list prevents all that coding. This is a much easier way if you have things numbered one, two, three, four, and you want to cycle through them. I have videos on the text global variable that show this exact technique. However, since we have this list global variable where we can go to the next value or the previous value, and it doesn't have to be numbers. I just put numbers here because I had doc one, doc two, doc three, doc four. Um, but it works perfect. I love it. I like it. It works great. And um, yeah. So there you have it. Now, again, use even number, use an even number of docs if you're going to animate like this. And now it's not working. And I know why, because when I went and showed you my global variable, very important. I'm glad this happened. Um, set it to something. That way, when you touch it, uh, when I had this next value thing, you have to have it set to something in order it, for it to go to the next value. So let me save that go back to my home screen and we should be back in business. So there's doc one, doc two, doc three, doc four, doc one. And then we can go backwards. Here's doc one, doc four, doc three, doc two, doc one. And as you can see, it does keep on cycling. Works great. So um, I'm definitely gonna start using this versus the text global variable when I wanna cycle through a certain number of items and then if it gets to the end of those items, I want it to go back to the beginning. That's exactly what we have going on here. And one more thing here for you as well. Uh, just like in the other video I did on animating docs, I also showed you alternative methods to have the docs uh, not only scale in and out, but we can also scroll them. And there is a much easier way than what I showed you the other day. I'm just sitting here messing around with it. So check it out. I think this is like doc four or three or something. But anyway, if I see what I'm doing, and see how the docs are actually scrolling in and out. And we can actually go the other way and everything should work nicely, as you can see. Now you may notice that in my animation here, I have a little bit of uh, this right here. And, th and what's causing this is that I made this doc the same width as my screen. And then I ended up putting some shapes, as you can see these little shapes around here. And these shapes, I put a stroke on the actual uh, little ring is what I call it, the ring around that square, the ring around that square, it has a stroke value to it of like five. And if you've messed around with stroke and you notice it does actually change the size a little bit. So if you stay away from the stroke and you keep the dock, the actual width of your phone screen or device screen, you know, this right here, this little technique of it scrolling in and out works great. And here's how you do it. All you have to do, you don't have to change any coding. Um, the only thing you need to do is, and you don't have to move anything. That's the good thing about this. This is the easier way versus what I did in the other video. Um, for doc one, notice I still got it positioned in the same spot. For animation, all I went and did was change my action to scroll. And for doc one, I have its angle set to zero. Okay, keep that in mind. For doc two, 
animation. I have it set to scroll, but notice the right here. Notice the angle is 180. Basically, I'm having these go back and forth, back and forth. For Doc 3, it's going to have the same exact animation as Doc 1 did. Again, I'm not changing the codes here, so the formulas are still staying. I'm in Doc 3, so I, I still have the same exact code I had as earlier. But uh, dock three, its position or its angle, excuse me, its angle is zero, and dock four's animation, again, not changing the actual formula. I'm just changing the angle, and that's what makes them go back and forth, back and forth, and it works smoothly. And again, this idea here of scrolling back and forth between your docks. Uh, Keep in mind here, the same idea is that you want to have an even number of docks for this to work correctly. But uh, there you have it. So you have two ways that you can animate multiple docs uh, on your custom live wallpaper. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.